guys welcome back to another video man it's been so long since I've done a video uh, yeah I can't remember when the last video was I think it was during SEMA or something I, I don't even know so yeah there's been a lot that has gone on over the past several 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 months <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm going to try to update you guys on kind of everything that that has you know happened and what's happening and all that stuff. So this may be kind of a, a long video. So hang in there. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, so the whole SEMA experience went great. We took the blade and we had an awesome response and everything uh, turned out really well. We had a great time. It's one of the uh, best experiences experiences I've had in my life, um, you know, with something of this magnitude, you know, that that is just something I've been working on for so long. It was quite the the dream, and and the the whole SEMA show was pretty outer outer body out of body kind of experience. So uh, it's hard to explain, but you know. Um, I didn't really feel like I was there necessarily <laughs> and and I uh, felt like I was just kind of watching myself you know doing this and it was just hard to believe so but it was probably a good thing uh, you know it was, it was a pretty stressful and intense um, deal to, to go through with having to build the blade in like five months we built this enormous team we had all this funding coming in and we had to put together this, this big show for the car. And so there was a lot of people involved, a lot of things going on, and it was just insane. So, <laughs> uh, but it was like a crazy, you know, I mean, it was like a good crazy or good kind of insane. And, you know, we were all tired and exhausted. And you can kind of see that in some of our SEMA update videos. I know you guys have probably seen some of those. Um, but it was, it was, uh, it was just, like I said, it was an amazing experience and to be able to, to see something that I've worked so hard together, you know, in the garage, uh, come together uh, and make it to SEMA in such a short amount of time was crazy. I mean, of course, being in the garage wasn't a short amount of time, but just from coming from the body buck stage of what I was working on in my garage to building an actual, uh, you know functioning vehicle that performs well and stuff was was uh, amazing so um, so yeah and we had you know a really great team that came together and you know did all this and it was it was just an amazing amazing experience so um, you know one of the things that, at SEMA that we really you know took away from the show was uh, I really like to, sorry, I have to keep switching hands. My arms are getting tired. Uh, was that I, I tried to put as many people as possible in the car and get their feedback on it. So we had a lot of you know industry leaders and just people from the industry and really people that knew uh, their stuff about cars, you know, give us their, their honest feedback. And these are no BS kind of people. I mean, we're kind of on their playground, so to speak. And, they all, I mean, we didn't, they all said such good things. We didn't have anybody really give out any major negativities about the car. Um, obviously there are, you know, uh, comments like you may want to do something with this and tweak this and change that and, you know, that kind of stuff. And so, uh, you know, took all that into consideration and, and um, those are things that, that we're looking at now with the car, but, uh, but yeah, for the overall experience and feedback that we got from SEMA was just amazing. And we were really like one of the only companies out there that that came into SEMA without like a product. <laughs> that sounds weird, but we didn't go in sponsored by, you know, Volano wheels or uh, whatever. You know, we weren't sponsored by Ford. We weren't sponsored by anybody. We just went in as BXR Motors and built our own stand and our, our own everything. And and our only goal goal was to show off the car and show it to all of these people that are in the industry and know about cars. We felt like that was a good kind of launch stage to, to uh, not just see what the public thinks about the car, but to see what real, you know, experienced, 
you know, car guru and business owners and, and company owners and all that stuff uh, thought about the car. So uh, it was a good it was a good chance to get all that feedback, and it was very important to us for that. So uh, so yeah, so the whole CM experience was good. The uh, parties were good. It's Vegas, <laughs> so. Um, you know, and we went, you know, all out on, on the car and and on SEMA ex itself. And so the, uh, it, it was quite a show and we, you know, did a lot, oops, zoom. Um, we did a lot of, you know, stuff that kind of confused a lot of people because they came by the booth and we had so many people, we had just like 50 to 30 people around our booth the whole time just looking at the car. I mean, I ended up taking the hood off because it attracted more people, seeing the Coyote motor with the twin turbos and seeing how, you know, we set everything up with, uh, you know, the, the balance of the system and, and how far back we were able to get the engine and just the uniqueness of, of the overall uh, car and placement of, of everything. So, um, and, and then the other thing that we were doing is we were really putting everybody into the car I and mean, we had so many people sit in the car and try out the car and, and give us their opinion and we had a lot of uh, you know even even you guys some YouTube guys uh, and people flew from other parts of the country to meet us and and see the car and just sit there and waited for hours just to talk about the whole uh, everything you know just it was it was it was crazy you know um, it was something that just kind of humbled me a lot. I didn't expect it, you know. I didn't imagine that, you know, a family would bring up their their, their son who's in the, the design industry and wait like two hours to sit there and just to, to talk to me or something. And and I'm like, man, I never even went to design school. <laughs> so uh, so I didn't have a whole lot to, to offer. I just said, here, I'll just put you in the car and you tell me what you think. And, uh, you know, so uh, pretty crazy. Um, but, you know, so that was kind of, you know, how our SEMA thing was. It was, it was a very good experience. We got to meet a ton of people and, you know, I haven't really, uh, well, I haven't done a video at all talking about this and, you know, I feel bad. You know, we've had so much stuff going on over the past several months that I'll get into and, and uh, you know, just, uh, I just haven't had the chance to really do a video on, how that experience was and it was really good for me and and everybody on on the team you know we all had a great time and everybody you know just had such pride in the car who who were part of this so it was it was a big it was a big thing for big deal for all of us uh, so uh, so yeah so with all of that you know we we came back and uh, uh, got the car back to the shop and started to really kind of think about you know, the direction we want to take the car. We went up there with, you know, kind of ex taking it under the expectations that this is a supercar and this is what we want to do. Uh, but it wasn't really somewhere I wanted to, what I wanted to do. I mean, I think you guys who have watched a lot of my videos always knew I wanted to keep it, you know, kind of an affordable car. So, kind of, sort of. <laughs> so, you know, I always want to keep it in that $100,000 range and never really over that $200,000 range. So, you know, that that's not, you know, your normal supercar is like 400 to $2 million. I mean, I, I guess your hypercars are $2 million or $1 million and your supercars are 400 to a $1 million. So that's not where I was wanting to, to aim. So kind of came back. Um, we had a, a few, you know, company business uh, ups and downs, you know, with our funding and just the overall expense of SEMA really hurt us more than we thought, you know, and the amount of money it takes to do something like that was just something that none of us really got. And, and when we got back, we were just all kind of floored. And so uh, it, it really put a, a delay into the blade and did, you know, it, it basically hurt BXR and it's uh, kind of your typical business startup, um, you know, ups and downs or just plain failures, you know, I mean, everybody that starts a business in a company, it's, 
you know, it's a hit or miss kind of thing. You really have to work hard to make it work. And it's not something that just, just fixes itself, you know, you know, so whatever issues you have, you have to really deal with and you have to be real with yourself and you have to take time to, to, uh, to resolve everything. So needless to say, you know, BXR almost kicked a bucket for a while there. Uh, and we, you know, had to devise up a way to uh, save everything. So it kind of fell onto my shoulders to, you know, do this. And so I started Project Phoenix basically and got new investment and uh, basically rebuilt the, the company over. Um, and and I'm, I'm kind of skipping, uh, you know, all the dramas and stuff that, you know, follow this but it's not really important it's just it's just basically your typical you know business startup and and how how business goes and doing what we're doing is not uh, inexpensive or you know it's not cheap to do and it's very expensive it's very taxing on the people who are involved and it's a whole lot of work so you know I started Project Phoenix I wasn't going to give up and basically you know rebuilt everything and we are all back on track uh, you know the company is is basically a lot smaller now um, <laughs> which is probably I mean it's probably a good thing uh, you know we don't have a lot of investment and you know it's we needed to keep it a small and SEMA was a great thing for us and a great learning experience and the whole opportunity was a great learning experience so you know, there's no, you know, negatives in this. It's just, it's just a lot of work, and things are never as easy as you think that they'll they'll be. And so, you, if you're the guy with the idea or the dream, you can't let any of those things stop you. You have to keep, you know, pursuing that dream and pushing forward and figuring out new ways to, you know, deliver what it is that, that you want to, you know, deliver to the world. So, uh, so with that said. You know, Project Phoenix started, and uh, it's still the blade and everything. We are uh, still BXR Motors, and you know everything is still going forward, um, and things are really going forward nicely now. So uh, we uh, we have you know taken a lot of that information that we gathered at SEMA to make some changes, and what the uh, new direction is for the blade. Is going to do two different versions. One version is called the Blade XTR, which is kind of like the the all uh, performance, uh, uh, full track race ready vehicle. And this is something that we have a particular market interest in, and we uh, we feel like we have a good opportunity to jump into this and 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 really deliver a super lightweight uh, vehicle. And so. So the uh, the Blade XTR will be a full roll caged, you know, certified, spec'd out um, uh, uh, roll cage and race style body. Uh, it won't have you know a fancy interior or digital displays. It will most likely be running on like uh, you know some kind of race tech or MoTeC or or Race Logic or whatever type of systems for. Oh, excuse me for racing and will be its you know sole purpose will be for that now it will be a street legal car but you'll have to get it street legal I and mean, we're not going to street legal the race car but it will be able to to be street legal so no, a lot of people have asked me that question before so that will be that car and and that's going to be a you know like the full race tires race brakes everything on it is, is designed for racing then we are doing a, sorry, I have to keep changing hands, man. Camera's getting heavy <laughs> and it's hot in this place. Uh, so, so the other car is the, uh, the Blade GTR, which is kind of like the Grand Touring, um, you know, race version. Uh, and that's basically the same as the race car, except for that it's not gonna have like the, all the door cage stuff that you have to normally like crawl over to get inside the car. The doors open normally. And, uh, and it will be a car that still has a, a, a roll cage, but 
you will be able to get into the car easily easily and you'll be able to like take a date out and cruise around town and enjoy the car it'll have nice suspension electric suspension and it will uh, uh, have you know nice interior and nice seats and all of that stuff so um, so it's kind of like the the uh, the real nice um, you know decked out version of, of the race car that's kind of toned down for street and you'll still be able to track the gtr version as well but uh it won't you won't be able to like enter it into any like sanctioned events or anything like that now you can always come back and have like the full roll cage put in and everything but you know it just depends on what options and what the person wants to do so that's kind of what we're doing with that and um that's kind of the new direction. So what we're doing is we're building a, a new, a completely new like chassis setup uh, that's able to meet both of these types of uh, uh, vehicle demands on the car, and um, and and kind of become a modular chassis system, so that we're using the same kind of chassis with this new type of steel that's kind of similar to like chrome moly but it's not brittle uh, like chromoly is, but you still get all the strength and uh, stiffness and all that stuff. So, so there's that, uh, and we still expect the car to be, you know, 2,600 pounds, possibly even lighter. Um, you know, uh, the race version it has a big possibility of even, you know, being even lighter. Uh, we're looking at adding about two more inches of headroom to the car, which it already has enough to fit me. So. Uh, I still want to get more and still make it more comfortable for people. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so yeah, so that's one direction, or that's the two directions that we're that we're going into. And uh, you know, that's that's basically kind of it on on what's going on with with the car um, and what's been happening. And it's been you know a lot of crazy uh, times with the business. I've been spending a lot of time with my family and uh, my kids and stuff, so I just kind of took a break and, uh, you know, just to recenter myself and make sure that I'm taking the right approach on a lot of this stuff since we're, you know, doing things a little differently and uh, and just being a little bit more money conscious with how to spend the funding and where to spend it and all the proper places. So things are a lot more. Uh, precise now and it's it's a uh, it's it's a different different kind of deal more more mature and grown up kind of version <laughs> so you know I felt like we had to kind of go through all the craziness of SEMA and what happened after SEMA to learn you know some of those core aspects of running a business and trying to build something like this and and to really be able to pull it off so I know as long as that, you know, I'm not giving up, and and the people around me are not giving up, and all support me, that we're going to make this happen, and we're just that close now. So uh, this vehicle is fully functioning and running. I've been doing burnouts with it today. Uh, and we put a new fuel system on it because it was uh, starving of fuel, and so it needed uh, a lot more. <laughs> and so we got that fixed, and, uh, and it's been real fun to drive and it, it does really really well uh, for how fast we put it together and you know and everything's not hundred percent so it's kind of crazy I mean I'm not gonna go take it around a racetrack just yet we, we're gonna we're building another car to, to do that with and so this one though you know I feel comfortable taking it out on a highway cruising around town uh, the suspension is nice and soft but yet super super like sticky and performance like uh, and I have some video that I'll probably attach to the end of this video or something to show you kind of what I mean. <laughs> um, but we have the active suspension on it right now, so when you like take a real hard turn, it it knows and it knows to stiffen everything up. And boy, does it it work! <laughs> it's like uh, uh, had a friend in the car, and I was you know doing like some solemn slalom uh, stuff on the street and. He was about that far from ending up into my lap, and so I have, happen to have a harness on the uh, other side of the seat, so it was kind of funny. But anyway, um, <laughs> but uh, 
but yeah, so that's where we're going. I told you it'd be like a long video. And what I'll do probably next is just kind of go over like some of the stuff on the car and give you guys an up close walk around. Like I've been kind of walking around it now. Um, and we have all these other cars in here. We got like a 8% uh, larger old style uh, GT40. And then we got like a uh, normal, more accurate GT40 over there. And then back there, we got like Cobras and stuff and all that. So uh, anyway, that's a, that's a whole nother thing. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll do that and, and give you guys an update on, on the rest of this car, give you a closer look at it. But I just wanted to do like, kind of like a long video that uh, talked about just everything over the past few months and stuff. So, you know, you guys feel free to, you know, hit me up on the comments and message me, email me, whatever you want. I've been answering pretty much all the emails and messages on YouTube and stuff. Our, uh, we have Instagram now. So the Instagram's just BXR Motors. Facebook's BXR Motors. So pretty much anything you can get to from just BXR Motors. So you type that in, you'll, you'll find it somewhere. Uh, but the Instagram's cool because we've been posting a lot of cool pictures. Uh, we're, we're also working with a new partner, um, uh, uh, Fisher Motorsports. And they're responsible for, for some of the fastest cars. Uh, they have one that you know held the record out of, out of the Texas Mile. I posted a video of that on uh, Instagram and I, and I did it on YouTube also. I forgot about that one. So check that out because that's who we're working with to do a lot of engineering on this car. They're helping us with our chassis stuff. They're helping us with uh, you know the uh, Motec wiring and all the race stuff and just so much. So there's a lot that, that's that's you know going to be coming from uh, them as we kind of partner together and go down this road together. So uh, anyway, um, I guess uh, on that note, I'll end this video and then I may do another one here of the car and then uh, I will see you guys uh, next time in the video. Hopefully a lot sooner. Um, I don't plan to. <laughs> take a, a long time off now we pretty much have everything back on track so i should be able to start picking things back up on the video and i will go over the blade and all that so anyway uh talk to you guys later peace out and i'll uh, see you next time